rest of your mind? No. Good job. Come on up. So I know everybody wants to know when's the power coming back on. Yeah. And uh, so my, my name is Jeff Randall. I'm the commissioner. We have three commissioners for Jefferson PED. I represent uh, District 1, which is Port Townsend, though you all get to vote for us. And uh, today we had some high winds last night, and our local transmission lines have some trees down on them, and our crews are out working, and they're trying to find all the trees and get those uh, removed so we can get this power system up. But I guess what I see here is we're surrounded by a renewable resource. We got all this stuff sitting here, which is what PD's business is based on, and sunshine and water make this work. And here we are in the Northwest in a sunny day. We've got sunshine up there, so we got another renewable resource that can power solar panels. And my background, I was like Hans, I was a solar installer working for another solar company in this county, Power Trip Energy. And we're really blessed that we have sunshine, we have Apparently, lots of people interested in solar power. How many people are here because they love solar power? I'm just kind of curious. How many are here because they love Eden Saw? I mean, why are you guys here today? All right. So um, we're blessed because people in this community and in this county want believe in solar power and want to invest in it. And I want to thank Kiwi and everybody else involved with Eden Saw who've made that significant investment. Um, the incentives. I often hear, so now I'm a utility commissioner, I get to go to these utility meetings, and oftentimes the utility guys come up to me and say, so when's solar power not gonna need the incentives anymore? And if you've noticed, there's one of the things that's on the ballot this session is a carbon tax. And what I like to tell the other folks is, well, when all the other energy sources don't need their incentives, solar won't need any either. Yeah. It's about <laughs> leveling the playing field. So. This fall, you know, and next week, you'll have the opportunity to vote putting a price on carbon, which is one of the problems with fossil fuels is underpriced because they're not paying for their pollution. Um, another problem we've got is, is consistency of incentives. And thank you for Carlotta. I haven't met Carlotta before, so we it's nice to phone. see her. Talk to you on the phone. So we've got this mix of incentives, and, I, and I'm assuming that he was able to take advantage of a 30% federal tax credit, right? The 25% grant through USDA, the, the, production, the production incentive, um, and then net metering. But all these things are kind of under threat. And um, renewable energy is a disruptor in the utility industry. And utilities, when I'm behind closed doors with these guys in big meetings, they are freaked out. They are freaked out by renewable energy and everybody's interested in it. And I try to think of one of the analogies I use is like banking. You know, banks don't just say, um, take loans from us. They also say, no, we'll take your deposits and we'll pay you interest. And utilities have a really hard time not wanting to buy your power. They wanna just sell you power. They have, a, they have a problem with this relationship of, well, we don't wanna buy your power because if we buy your power, that's, that's screwing up our whole economy of buying wholesale power really cheap. So I like to think of utilities should be in the business of enabling the local economy uh, through energy, which is a vital source for our economy. We know today the economy is pretty dead with the power out, so we want to get the power back up. But we, should, we shouldn't be afraid of looking at our customers as a way to, yeah, we'll buy your renewable energy and we'll resell it again. Um, and we should be encouraging people to have uh, backup power because today if we had backup power here. We've got solar, but we don't have, uh, we can't use it because the grid's down. As soon as the grid comes back up, this array can go back on. So there's all sorts of things we can do, and we all know we're kind of isolated out here, aren't we? We get an earthquake, we get landslides, things like this trees coming down can interrupt our power. So there's all sorts of technological changes that are happening that allow us to do backup power, and I hope all of you are thinking about what's my backup power plan, because Power outages can't happen. What's my backup power plan in my home so I have food and water and I'm, I'm safe? Because that's all our responsibilities. But um, I guess what I want to tell you is we have we have a lot of work left to do. And this, the state, one of the state solar incentives that make this all possible is, is we're going to hit a ceiling on it this January. And it was supposed to run through 2022, and it's already kind of being broken. And it was just passed a little over a year ago. So talk to your legislators and support them in helping to make changes. And we also have a, a senator, Senator Vandeway, who can, who can help influence that. And I will do what I can, but there's really no substitute for individuals contacting people in the legislature by phone and other, that's 
I've heard the most effective way, and letting them know that we expect more. Because do you guys want you guys want to stop at like one percent renewable energy or two percent? Is that good? You want to stop there? Because that's the incentive levels that we have. They stop basically there. And if we're going to do more, we have to come up with some some better means to you know make it economically feasible, which it doesn't need that much help. But we're already seeing some utilities like Clallam has discounted the energy through net metering that if they don't, they, you can't uh, sell the utility the power at the same rate you buy it from them. They discount it to the wholesale price, and that's a that's a movement that's happening in utilities. So there's all these things that can happen that can make it really not work, but the sun will keep shining. You know, so we could we could make we could uh, have this be a big part of our economy for a long time as long as we don't get in our own way. And I think there's a lot of education that needs to go on with our legislators and who, who, who have a big part of this. And uh, so thank you again, I'm sorry I talk so much, but um, it's frustrating for me to go to utility meetings and have the people, or legislative sessions, and have the people who have the power not know very much about this stuff, and they don't know how much people want it. So thank you. Thank you.